Hey everybody, I'm Tom Basso and welcome to Best of Designers, where I take a look at different designers and tell you my favorite games they've done. Today we're talking about Antoine Boza. Now, because of a few games that he has designed, he is incredibly popular these days, but he deserves it once again, as I say about many designers, such a nice, self-effacing type of guy, really fun to play games with. Uh, and when, when you meet him, he's just kind of like, oh, yeah, I've done these games. He's worked with a couple other people, but I like him because he he fits into that category of guys who have really great game mechanisms, but the theme also makes sense. So even on his more abstract games, and he's done abstract games like Oceanos and, and Hanabi, which is one of his most popular games, and which is in on my list, but I understand a lot of people really like it. Um, the, the theme doesn't nearly as strong in those games, but it's still there. And I even like the fact that the theme, like in Hanabi, for example, is different. But what are my favorite 10 games that he has done? Here we go, number 10. Very strong theme, Attack on Titan. I didn't expect this game to... I don't know what I expected from this. It's based on a Japanese anime, or a cartoon actually based on an anime, of giant titans in the future or the past. I'm not sure what time frame it is where they've destroyed Earth, and they're coming up against these cities, and you have sent out a couple people to go and fight them. So it's a cooperative game or a team game where a bunch of people are fighting the Titan, and one person controls the Titan, and you actually jump up and down the Titan and fight it. Very interesting, dice-style fun game. Very strong theme, but fairly light. Number nine is Tokaido. The very opposite. Peace. Zen. In Tokaido, you're on a journey, and you just move far on this path, and wherever you land, you get that. You might get part of a painting. You might get some food at different places. You're gonna score points in various places as you move down this path. And you can move as far as you want, but once you move somewhere, you can never move back. So that's a pretty cool concept. Really enjoy this one, Tokaido. Number eight, the opposite, Terror in Meeple City, or it was originally called Rampage, based on the Rampage video game, which has a movie coming out this year. But in this game, there's giant, um, you're giant monsters, and you are just trying to destroy the city, which is a three-dimensional city with little Meeple wooden dudes and cardboard pieces on top of them, and you are flicking things at them and dropping them on them and blowing, and it's just, it's a destruction affair. So if, you, if that idea sounds fun to you, you are literally blowing up a city. Well, that's what this game all is. Number seven is Mystery Express. Now, this is a game from Days of Wonder. It's a deduction game from Days of Wonder, and it's one of the few games of Days of Wonder that did not make a humongous splash, but it should have. I really like this one. You're on a train trying to figure out who, um, what, what the crime has happened, and you're doing so um, by looking at cards and moving around on this train, and it's just, it's fun. It has that, that it's not as clean as maybe some deduction games are, but it has a nice cool theme to it. There's this train, the components and everything just come forth, and I really enjoy it. Number six is Little Prince Make Me a Planet. This is based on the very popular Little Prince stories. And there's quite a few of these games out there, but I enjoyed this one because you are building tiles, almost Carcassonne style, and building up your planet, trying to score points for various things on it. Has that whimsical artwork, but also just some good solid game mechanisms too. Number five is Pony Express. Now you probably haven't heard of Pony Express, but it's, uh, it's one of those games that makes me smile every time we play it. You are at a Pony Express and trying to get to the end, and you're moving on the, on the spaces essentially by rolling some poker style dice and telling people what you've rolled. Oh, I got three of a kind. That's how far I can move. People can call your bluff, of course, if you are lying, and then you get caught and go to jail. You can have duels with other people. You have to watch out for the Native Americans who uh, are attacking you. You're flicking things at each other. There's all sorts of little zaniness going on in this game, which comes down rolling dice. It has a really strong theme to it. So that's number five. Number four is Takinoko, the panda eating bamboo game. Uh, just sitting right down here, I have the giant version of Takinoko. But just, I mean, obviously people like pandas. It's a very popular animal. But this game just looks beautiful as the, the, the stalks of pink, green, and yellow bamboo. And you essentially are, are playing cards, trying to get these different goals. And so you're going to be adding bamboo, making them... The panda go around and eat bamboo, having the gardener kind of chase the panda away, and slowly kind of building up this cool garden. It looks neat, but it's also just do a few things to meet these goals. A very strong, what I call gateway game, a game that's easy to get people into the hobby. All right, now the big three. His most famous game he's ever designed is number three, and that is Seven Wonders. 
Seven Wonders, of course, civilization style game, a drafting game in which each era of the game, you're going to get a handful of cards, you're going to pick one, you're going to play it, pass it around. What you pick will give you maybe resources, which you'll need to use to build other cards, might give you points for the end of the game, might give you some special abilities. And at each round, the stuff gets better and better, and at the end, you score points. And it just works like a charm. There's a lot of different uh, expansions for the game that add leaders, that add cities, that add uh, Babel towers and monuments and things you can build. And they all make the game really good. This is a game that plays seven people, which is a rare thing. You're kind of mostly just interacting with the people next to you, but you're always keeping an eye on everything that's going on. An excellent game, Seven Wonders. But even better, number two is Seven Wonders Duel, which is not just a variant of Seven Wonders for two players. It's all, it's a redesigned game. Same theme, building a civilization, but now you're drafting from cards that are laid on the table and you pick one up, which might reveal other cards for the other player to take. Three very distinct ways to win, a kind of a tug and war back and forth. You got military and science and then just getting straight points. It is a solid game, very highly rated by many people. I highly recommend it, Seven Wonders Duel. And then my favorite game from Antoine Bauza, easily, I just love it, is Ghost Stories. This cooperative game where you are four Shaolin monks in this city that's being attacked by ghosts from all sides. Crazy, scary ghosts. I mean, crazy scary. And they just keep coming and coming. It has a bit of a tower defense thing, and you have to move around, roll dice, make decisions, fight them off the ghosts, and you basically just have to survive until one big, giant, mean, bad ghost comes in, and you fight that one off, you beat him, you win the game or her, or it, or whatever it is. Really fun game. I have played this many times. Every time I have a blast, I've lost it probably 90% of the time, but those 10% of the times that I've won have been absolutely incredibly fun. And that's my favorite game he's done. Tell me what your favorite games that he has done in the comments below. He's very popular, does some fantastic stuff. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy his games. Until next time, I'm Tom Bowser. You've been watching Best of Antoine Bowser on The Dice Direct.